So we've learned how to do the basic operations with radicals, how to simplify them, how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. But now we're going to see more complicated problems of these. Think back to more of polynomial style with radicals involved. Think back to your operations of like distributing, foiling, and so on and so forth. So let me just show you some examples of what we're going to be doing in this video. So here we see that we have, okay, this would be a distribution. Um, we also have a FOIL, and the examples are only going to progress from there. But before we start working through these examples, I want to show you a very nice trick with square roots, and that's going to make the rest of these examples a lot easier to work through. So I have something here. If I have a square root of something times an identical square root, meaning my insides of these are identical, then this is going to actually simplify to just the piece that we see inside. So let me prove to you why. I know that I can combine these two square roots because I had a property that said so. This would just give me n times n on the inside, or if I simplify it as n squared. And then I know that my square and my square root cancel out. So that leaves me with just n, or again, with just the piece that we see on the inside. So if we ever multiply two identical square roots, Hopefully you know to skip this process here and just to get whatever we had on the inside. That's going to save you a lot of work in these future examples here. So let's go back to that first example that I showed you here. The three root five, so that's my term on the outside. I want to multiply it by this trinomial or this three termed piece on the inside. Whenever I have a one by something, the keyword that I'm going to use is distribute it. So I have to distribute this three root five to all of these pieces. Now the easiest way for me to explain this is the things that are on the outside of the root, those go together. And the things that are on the inside of the root, those go together. So you can kind of separate it like that. So in my first piece, three root five times two root five. You multiply the outsides of the root together. Three times two gives me six. And then I multiply my insides of the root together. Now I can work this out longhand or I can use that hint that we just discussed. Any square root times itself just gives you the leftovers of the inside. So the square root of five times the square root of five just leaves me with five. So that's what I get when I multiply my outside piece times my first term. Okay, now let me take my outside piece times my second term here. Again, the principles are the same. Keep your outsides of the root together and your insides of the root together. So my outsides are three times four or a positive four would give me a positive 12. And my insides are root five times root two. So these square roots do not match, which means I actually just have to multiply the numbers on the inside. Five times two gives me 10. And I have now multiplied it by my second term. So last but not least, I have to take three root five times this negative six back here. Well, the negative six doesn't have any root with it, so I just think of that all on the outside of my root. So three times negative six gives me negative 18, and then I just copy down my square root. So first, I'm going to do any simplification I can, and second, I'm going to see if I can combine any of these. Well, to simplify this, I can multiply six times five to give me 30, plus 12, my square root 10, I would see if I could break that down into good pi, bad pi, which I cannot, so I just need to copy down my square root 10. And then again, minus 18 root 5, I want to see if I can simplify my square root 5. I cannot, so I just copy that piece down to my next step. Now, 
to add or subtract these, I would need to have like terms, meaning my roots would need to match exactly. And they don't, so that means I have my final answer at this point. I cannot combine anything farther, so this is what we're going to hand in. So let's move on to my second example here. Notice in these parentheses, I have two terms in my first and two terms in my second. So I have a binomial times a binomial. And when I'm multiplying two binomials, that means I'm going to FOIL. So the process that I'm going to use here is just the exact same process that we used in polynomials. First, outside, inside, last. But now we also have to use the techniques that we've learned with square roots along the way. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can get the correct answer to this one. Okay, following my FOIL process, I have my first piece here times my first piece there. Multiply the outside of the roots, 2 times 4 gives me 8, and multiply the roots, square root y times square root y. Anytime I multiply identical roots, I get the inside. So that just leaves me with a y by itself. Now my outside, 2 root y times a positive 5 leaves me with a positive 10 square root y. I multiply the outsides, 2 times 5 gives me 10, and just copy down my square root. Now my inside, a negative 3 times a 4 root y. Multiply the outside of the roots, negative 3 times 4 gives me negative 12, and again, just copy down the root at this point. And last gives me a negative 3 times a positive 5, just simple multiplication, gives me a negative 15. Now, just like any other FOIL process, we almost always combine the middle two terms. And I can do that here because those are like terms. So I have my 8y up front. 10 minus 12 gives me a negative 2 with my square root y, and then my constant term of 15. I cannot go any farther because I do not have any more like terms, so that there is my final answer. All right, I have one more example of these type of problems, and that is 3x plus square root 2 quantity squared. I have complete faith that you can do this one on your own, so pause the video and see how far you get. Let me first go over this one by telling you what not to do. And it goes back to this thing here. So this says, you absolutely cannot distribute your square when your inside operation is addition or subtraction. Remember this thing here? It says every time you do that, you're killing a puppy. So hopefully you did not do that in this example there. So the correct way to do this problem is to write out what something squared actually means. And that is to write it out twice and multiply it. Now it's just a FOIL from here. So first, 3x times 3x gives me 9x squared. Outside, 3x times square root 2. My 3x is outside a root. My root just copies down right next to it. Inside, same exact thing, 3x on the outside of the root with a 2 on the inside of the root. Last, root 2 times root 2. Anytime you multiply a square root by itself, that gives you 2. Again, just like most FOIL, we can combine the middle two pieces. The like term is a x root 2. So I add 3 plus 3, which gives me a 6, and copy down my like term and my constant term of 2. I cannot go any farther because I do not have any like terms, so this here is my final answer. So we've seen quite a few different examples of polynomial style things with square roots involved in them.